Hi, welcome back to the channel and today we are going to go on about tension settings and stitch settings but it's going to be in two videos. Part one is on tension and part two is on stitches. In other news, these are going to be the last videos of the year. There's not going to be any video next week so there will be a video after the new year on the second. I hate to see you go but I think we all need a rest. Stop sewing, spend some time with your family and loved ones and enjoy your festivities. Now back to the topic at hand, tension settings. Tension settings are what determines how uh, quickly your thread passes through the machine, how fast, how slow, and that's what gives you even stitches. So anyway, we'll see it in details after the break. If your sewing machine has a tension knob like this, all you have to do is leave it on default. When you go lower, you make it tighter. When you go higher, you make it looser. So that's how you set your tension. It's just following the numbers. But basically, just leave it on the default and sew. You really don't have to fiddle with this so much unless you're trying to get a different effect or something. Alternatively, if you have a computerized sewing machine, it's the same thing, just leave it on default before sewing. Really what you just want to do, in my case I've threaded the machine up to the tension disc, is just pull your thread a little. In my case it's really tight, it means I have to loosen it. You need the thread to move just a bit. It should move freely but with some resistance. Some have numbers, this uh, model doesn't. So my thread is too tight, I can't pull it. I'm just going to turn the knob slowly till the thread starts moving freely. Now I can pull it. It shouldn't be so free, it just falls out. But it should be free, but with some resistance. Now I'm just going to thread the rest of the machine. The first thing is that your stitch length should be set to the default. On this machine that would be an 8 or a 10. We'll start with that before we start sewing. If you have a machine like this it should be 2.5 or if it's digital like this it should also be 2.5 if you're in millimeters. Now before you actually adjust anything you should just do a test swatch. You know you don't even know if you have any problems till so you actually sew certain things. So I'm going to quickly just sew a straight stitch here. Good. Now for a quick test. This is meant to be a permanent stitch. First you have to look at how even it looks. I used two colored threads, a darker and a lighter one, so you can see. Basically, I'm just making sure, sorry, <laughs> this piece of thread there, making sure that it's even on both sides. Visually, it looks okay. It's flat, it's smooth, there's no puckering. Next, what I'm going to check is if the thread is actually, the stitch is actually tight enough. So I'm going to pull one end here. It shouldn't pull out because this will be a permanent stitch to be firm. I'm going to try the back and it's hard to pull out too. So I think we have a good stitch here. And if we open it up, you can see it's quite firm. Right now this is good enough or I can make the stitches a little smaller or I can tighten my tension just a little bit but I'm very close. So that's an example of a good stitch and that's a very easy way to test your upper threads should be on the upper side, your lower threads should be on the bottom side. It should be all flat and even, the fabric shouldn't pucker and it shouldn't be easy to take apart. Now let's see what bad tension looks like. I wasn't able to get perfectly bad stitches but this is an example of when your stitches are very loose or your tension is loose, your upper thread tension is loose. As you can see, you can see the upper thread showing at the bottom. 
So that's one sign. And when we pull, though there's some resistance, I can actually pull the thread out. Actually, I can completely pull the thread out and that is not a good sign. And it's off. So that's an example of bad tension. If your upper thread tension is really loose or really off, sometimes what you actually get are nuts on the underside. I wasn't able to achieve that, but a good example would be Trish Newberry's video. There's a link above here and a link in the description box. If your tension is too tight, this is something you might have end up with. You can see already the fabric is puckering. It's forming little gathers. So it's actually a bit too tight. So that's not good. You can actually tear your fabric if your fabric is not very thick. And you can see the thread can't move at all, but it's definitely tight. And another way you know that your tension is too tight is if your thread starts cutting when you sew. When you sew a few stitches, it cuts. You sew a few stitches, it cuts. It's also too tight. One last way of adjusting tension is the bobbin thread tension. Now, ideally, you don't need to fiddle with your bobbin. But you see, when you pull the thread, it should move. But there's some resistance. It's not overly free unless I pull it really hard. There's this little screw on the side. You just use a screwdriver and you tighten it or loosen it. What that does is makes that latch get tighter or looser so that the thread, you can see, resists a bit. And that's how you want it to be. You want it to move, but you want some resistance. If it moves that fast with just a little pull, it's too loose. But you should feel some resistance when you pull it. And that's a good bobbin tension. As I said, you shouldn't mess with your bobbin tension all the time. That's something you save for extreme cases, last minute resort. Always check your upper thread tension, re-thread your machine just to be sure before you decide to fiddle with your bobbin. Brings us to the end of part one. Uh, the next video is part two. We're just going to jump into stitch settings and I'll see you there.